Welcome to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. The Supreme Court ruled earlier this week that the president has some protection from criminal prosecution with respect to his official acts. The decision will complicate the effort to prosecute former President Donald Trump for his alleged conduct relating to the 2020 election. CNN's Van Jones said the court had given Trump a, quote, license to thug. Let's watch. It's bad. It makes the Supreme Court look very partisan. Uh, they're supposed to be wearing these kind of black and white uh, umpire jerseys or whatever. They look like they're wearing red jerseys uh, for, uh, or even MAGA hats. It's going to go down bad politically for the Supreme Court. It's also scary because what is Trump going to do? If Trump gets elected and there's this idea that he can get away with even more stuff, that's really, really scary for the public because he already <laughs> ran over every norm that he could. So it seems like, I mean, just, I'm just looking at this politically, not legally, politically, it's almost like a license to thug in a way. A license to thug. I, you know, I wish they stopped making Trump sound cooler than he is. <laughs> yeah, so this decision has uh, greatly alarmed people in this town, obviously. You know, I read it, and I, I, I don't want to, as a libertarian, I don't want to give Trump or Biden or anyone in the office of the presidency more uh, protection from accountability. Now, I, I think there was a, the freak out went a little bit too far. The decision, because the decision did not actually say Trump is shielded from all potential criminal inquiries. It says, well, there are official acts and unofficial acts. Um, it depends, you know, whether it's it's something that is part of his uh, power, like clearly enumerated to him under the Constitution. Um, he, he could still be prosecuted. And in um, Amy Coney Barrett's um, concurrence, she really did start getting into some of the election-related stuff and saying that, you know, we're not saying this is this is official and thus. He, he can't be prosecuted from this. Some of this to her looks pretty bad. We're just saying the lower court needs to, you know, take that in, into consideration. Um, you know, that said, I, I do think it would be helpful for people on the right to think beyond Trump's like narrow self-interest a little bit in, uh, you know, avoiding um, the, the criminal trials and saying, oh, well, do we want to actually expand protect the office of the presidency? And I know presidents have done all sorts of unconstitutional legal stuff forever and get away with it. But I don't like that. So my, my view of this was, okay, it's not, it's not the disaster some people were saying, because it still does leave, like he still can be prosecuted from this, it's just gonna take longer. So they're sorry, it's not gonna happen before the election, Democrats. Um, but it seems to me a move in the wrong direction. I disagree. I think that this is really the only logical conclusion that you can reach. If you want a president to be able to make decisions specifically on foreign policy without fear of being prosecuted criminally by his successor. Do I want that, though? <laughs> you might. I mean, I think it would probably be generally bad for the country if we just had a string of successive presidents prosecuting the prior president for a decision that they made in office that was, again, in their enumerated constitutional powers. And even the, the decision goes even a little bit narrower than that because they also uh, specify a difference between acts that are relegated explicitly and solely to the executive versus powers that he might share with Congress. And those also have to be litigated by lower courts first before going to the Supreme Court in terms of whether or not those acts are shielded from immunity. Um, there were a couple of surprising voices that came out in support of this and kind of said, hey guys, I know that you're worried about Trump, but let's look at this in the broader context of what being a president means. And uh, and making sure that they're able to do the job without fear of constantly, you know, having criminal reprisal. Yeah. Um, the proper authority for holding presidents accountable is impeachment, impeachment, sure. or at the ballot box, sure. um, unless they do something that's outside of their official acts that's criminal. And um, Attorney General Bill Barr, who's obviously not a big Trump fan, came out and said that Sonia Sotomayor's dissenting opinion, where she described this sort of hypothetical scenario where Trump would use SEAL Team Six to assassinate Biden, is ludicrous. It makes no sense. Um, uh, MSNBC contributor, a former DEA official who resigned under Trump, Rosenberg, similarly said that he finds the decision to be quite logical for explicitly the reasons I laid out. So I think there's a lot of fear mongering coming from the left specifically because they don't like Trump very much without really looking at the broader context, even going back to uh, Nixon and a uh, similar Supreme Court decision related to his conduct in office, that this is a, a narrow way of shielding presidents related 
solely to things that they are allowed to do under the yeah. Constitution. It was a little bit of a cop-out because they're like, well, there's this category of official acts and unofficial acts, but we're not going to clearly define what either is. Like, does if if Trump's conversation with Mike Pence, is, it, does it matter if he's in the White House when he makes it or not? Um, do those things come into play? Because he's, and then he's, the president, but he's also a political figure. It, it starts to me, I mean, some of this gets confusing, even with things like the Hatch Act, which you know prohibits political figures from um, using the authority of their office to engage in partisan political campaigning. I'm like, well, you know, is this speech or is this a campaign event or is this a speech in your official duties? It does, frankly, end up getting a little bit confusing. And basically, the Supreme Court was saying, yeah, well, here's what we think the criteria is. Go look at this a little bit harder. And you, you know, you said about about the incumbent, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a nation, right, where the next person in power always just and automatically puts their predecessor in, uh, in prison. That banana republic type thing is worth avoiding. Um, you know, at the same time, if, if more presidents faced accountability for actions, I think, are unconstitutional, even in, even and especially in the foreign policy realm, where the presidency is the least constrained on foreign policy of anything. Congress, though under our you know, system, uh, constitutional system set up by our founders, they gave Congress the power to declare war. That's out the window. We don't pay any attention to that now. The president can operate solely at his own discretion with respect to foreign policy, and Congress is not going to do a thing. In fact, there's tremendous agreement in Congress with the, the president, regardless of their Republican or Democrat, on having a more interventionist foreign policy, I would argue. Um, so they don't even care about holding the president a, a, accountable for actions in that realm. Um, but you're right that the criminal accountability method is not an ideal method in a lot of cases. Um, you know, Trump was impeached for his conduct related to January 6th. I agreed with it. I thought the conduct was appalling, and they voted essentially to acquit him. They did not remove him from office. Some Republicans voted to, to, uh, to remove him from office, but, you know, he won that trial, so, like, what more do you want? And now he's running for re-election, and if you don't think he's fit to be president, you don't have to vote for him. That you know, in a democracy, that is generally the way um, it's it's supposed to it's supposed to go. And and with these election-related cases, you know, they vary in quality to me. And the the federal one is is in my view the weaker one uh, because it has to. If you read the indictment, it has to do with like a lot of speech. On this right. day, on this day, he said this. He told them he to fight. That. <laughs> it's like well, that's that's good. again. You can think this is inappropriate speech, and you could think the consequence of that should be not reelected or even impeached by uh, by Congress. But is the, the First Amendment is very robust. Is the remedy for that some kind of criminal action? At least in, in the, the Georgia case, there are more specific things that are brought up. The, I mean, they're still alleged, they're being worked out, that you know, they arranged another slate of electors. And there, there's other conspirators who are gonna argue that, well, they tried to hold a meeting at a time it wasn't scheduled, and they, the documents were forged, and there's this kind of RICO-esque conspiracy going on. In the Jack Smith case, it's a lot of pure speech to me, which makes me extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, I agree. You brought up the Hatch Act, which I think is definitely relevant here because there is sort of a long tradition of even officials who are found to violate the Hatch Act sort of just getting a slap on the wrist. They get right. a warning or sometimes a fine, but generally they're not thrown out of office or punished in some other way. Um, so I think that is sort of a precedent in some ways or instructive of the way that the immunity argument will be viewed as well in terms of the official acts. Um, but I mean, you're right, there's going to be a lot of these questions coming up before the courts as they seek to actually put into boxes what is official, what is unofficial, what do you do with the things that are kind of in the middle. Um, and it, it will be another one of those situations where we have years and years and years of legal challenges to really sort this stuff out, and which is gonna suck. It's yeah. gonna be annoying, but I think it's better than the alternative. Thug life, official act or not, I right. guess we're gonna <laughs> find out that. Thanks for watching Free Media. Please like, share, and subscribe, and tune in next week for more content.